Hi, and welcome to Survivor Reborn's podcast series. I'm your host, Jenny Millward, and I'm joined today by Chris of the Survivor Reborn team. Hey. Uh, today, as part of Pride Month, we're discussing the impact Lara Croft and Tomb Raider has had on the LGBTQ community. And our special guests today are Fabi and Jackie. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 So, uh, Jackie, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so, hi, my name is Jackie, and I've been known in the Tomb Raider community as Gecko Kid. I've been a Tomb Raider fan since I was 11 when Tomb Raider 1 was out. I was completely obsessed with the games, buying magazines, reenacting Lara's cutscenes, and lapping up all the information I could get for the next games. Um, I also used to build Tomb Raider levels, with the latest one being The Beginning, which has been on hiatus. But thanks to the level editing experience, I got really interested in 3D and animations and art and landscape and architecture, essentially allowing me to eventually become a motion graphics designer working in London, and I could not be more grateful. I'm Fabi. Hi, I'm Fabi, and some of you may know me as Long Way to Helheim. I upload lots of Tomb Raider related voiceover content. I'm a huge fan of Natla, and of course, I'm absolutely happy to be a guest on this podcast today. <laughs> so, some people might be a little bit surprised to hear that Lara Croft is actually an LGBTQ icon, but she really is, and it's really important that we recognise why that is. So, Jackie, what would you say Lara Croft actually means to the LGBTQ fandom? Um, I think she means quite a lot to us because she is quite independent and the way she portrays herself kind of resonates with how we grew up to be who we are. When I was growing up, I always kind of feel like I wasn't really belonging to the society in the way that it's acceptable. And that kind of resonates with how Lara was in her upbringing in her classic Bio biography yeah and how she was disowned by her parents was something that was a little bit close to home to some of us as well and i thought that was quite interesting yeah that's definitely something that a lot of people sadly in this community can uh, can relate to so fabi what mm -hmm. sort of things would you say that tomb raider and lara croft especially actually means to you personally in this um in this particular aspect of the fandom well, there's actually a lot, um, you know, as Jackie said before, it's because of her attitude, she's independent and she's going to, you know, in her adventures, she's going to face a lot of, um, you know, people who want to control her, which is something I have faced for a very long time, um, like when I was like 14 or maybe 13, I think I came out at 12 or 11. And I remember that many people were like, oh, this is just a phase. You're going to get over it. You're going to find the right boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've heard all of this before. Um, and I thought, no, this can't be true. And I felt really weak. I was like very sad about this kind of stuff. I was just very young and I didn't know what to do. And when Lara Croft came into my life, I, I thought, wow, she's so strong. I'm going to look up to her. It's, yeah. This is like, wow, this is what you want to be. Or this is who you want to be, you know? Yeah, because, um, Chris, I think that you were bringing to my attention an article that turned up on intimore.com earlier this year. And it was something that was said in that was, was basically <laughs> echoing what Fabian and Jackie just said, which is, you know, no one can force her to be anything except who she wants to be. Yes. Um, and this is particularly appealing to queer fans who possess their own personal definition of what gender really means to them. Because what, what's your experience been as having Lara Croft in, in your life in that regard, Chris? Um, I have can't tell you the amount of times throughout my life that I've been faced with people when I've started talking to them about Tomb Raider or even just mentioned it mid-conversation. Uh, I've been faced with comments such as, oh, you only play this because of, oh, you just love looking at her chest or, oh, you just love checking her out. And it's like, A, no. B, do you know me at all? C, that's not what the game is. That's not why I play these games. It strikes me as there's so much that people who are just casual gamers or the stereotypical teenage fanboys or the t stereotypical male gamers who don't look beyond who don't look beyond the marketing, quite frankly. And if they were to delve deeper, maybe they'd understand more. 
you know, that seems to be a, a very universal uh, problem <laughs> that, that uh, keeps coming back to haunt the franchise, that uh, its superficial appearance, particularly in the 90s, is all most people seem to have got from it. But obviously Lara has meant an awful lot more to fans than that and to the queer gay community as well. <laughs> you know, speaking as a bisexual female, I love the fact that Lara was kind of refusing to conform with what just these, as you call them, Chris, these stereotypical teenage fanboys wanted her to be. You know, she was blowing kisses in the adverts, but in the game, the only word you got out of her most of the time was no. Because, <laughs> yes. you know, because you were doing it wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So there was an enormous amount of freedom that she sort of represented. You know, I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to be who I am. And I'm not going to just pander to your expectations. And and I'm going to do it with style. What I also yes. really love about her was that, like, she is inherently sexy, but she never uses that in the games to her advantage. Yeah, and she right. just accepts that's how she looks. And no one else in the games, which I really appreciate, also seemed to care about her body at all. And what that's what yeah. I really like about it. That's true. That's true. I mean, this we're talking, you know, an awful lot about the the Lara Croft and the Tomb Raider of the the core design era, the 1996 to 2003 era, where marketing was hypersexualized far beyond what the games should have have encountered. But in the new era, in in the most recent reboot, you know, the question about Lara's sexuality and how she relates to the gaming industry and to feminism as well has resurfaced. Um, particularly in relation to the reboots, Lara uh, relationship with people like Sam. For instance, like Rihanna Pratchett has has publicly said that, and I'm quoting here from a Kill Screen interview, there's part of me that would have loved to make Lara gay. So how would you have felt about that aspect of the character being not just implied, but absolutely made explicit in the reboot era? Um, Fabi, do you, can you tell us how you know you've related to that? What your views are? <laughs> okay, this has a long backstory to it, so buckle your seat, uh, buckle up, uh, fasten your seatbelts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I got into the fandom, I was like maybe thirteen or fourteen, um, and this was the thing I was confronted with with Lara and Sam being together, and maybe you know being in a relationship which wasn't fleshed out at all. Um, so I was like, this is great. Like, this is such a great representation. Like, I was super happy to see it. And I was like, a bit sad at that time that um, their relationship didn't get mentioned later on. I mentioned later on, I'm sorry. Um, Jackie, what sort of take have you had on, on this implied revisiting of Lara's sexuality in the reboot? Because of course, after, re after the first reboot, Lara's entire relationship to pretty much every other character except Jonah was completely dropped. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit strange as well. Um, personally, I don't really see the new Lara as my Lara because I grew up with the classic Lara and while I welcome the change to hint that her sexuality is to be a lesbian or bisexual, um, she doesn't really impact me in that way because I just can't really stand the new Lara. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is um, this is something that's you know definitely been a marked change that I noticed in the '90s. Whenever gender or sexuality was brought up in relation to Tomb Raider, as Chris has said, it was always more about her superficial appearance and the way that her perceived fandom was only stereotypically drooling fanboys, which of course it wasn't. But in the reboot era, we are now exploring the possibility of a gay or bisexual Lara which didn't really get any kind of airtime back in the 90s. So that's an interesting shift. And it might even have something to do with the resurgence of the question about feminism in the franchise. Um, Chris, have you noticed any sort of um, particular shift in relation to Lara's gender, her sexuality, and that of her fans? I think very slightly. I don't think it's anything major in terms of a fan shift but I think because classic Lara was much more much more of an ambiguous character than uh, reboot Lara has been I think that is a lot uh, down to how she presents herself in game we didn't get any real real insight into uh, 
anything of that kind of side of Lara's personality uh, during the first six games, even Legend Anniversary or Underworld. I think it's when the reboot happened and they wrote so much more for Lara's character and for this, well, for this new Lara that they have created, that you get a lot more sense of who, of exactly who this new character is. And I think because of that, that has spurned on more talk. People have more of an insight into the character, so they are, I think people talk more about these side of things. And because of things like her friendship, relationship with Sam, because of comments such as Rihanna Pratchett saying that she would have loved to have made Lara gay, there's a lot more talk of it in that respect, because I think there is more to talk about. There is more that people can say, oh, Lara said this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, but she actually thought this kind of thing. And, and the, there's different bits of voiceover that say maybe conflicting things. So people talk about it more because there is more to talk about, perhaps. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. There's, this has opened up a previously un explored area of Lara's character and as you say she used to be far more ambiguous and it wasn't really mentioned at all beyond a few flirtatious posters. I mean to to quote Noel Adams aka P Fangirl she wrote an article um, on her blog in April two, uh, 2013 when the reboot first came out she says the Tomb Raider games have never been about Lara Croft's sexual orientation or relationship status. Yeah. They're about her kicking ass and solving yeah. ancient mm -hmm. mysteries on her own. Yeah. It's true. There is that kind of impact of if people were to push the issue of Lara and a relationship, is Lara that kind of girl now? Was she ever that kind of girl? The concept of Lara and individual, her individual self being so independent, I think is quite a fundamental aspect of Lara Croft as a character maybe to a slightly less degree now than it used to be, but I think it's still important. I don't think the developers have pushed that aside too much, uh, but it goes as far as... It even touches on gameplay because it's it's a very single-player game. It's a solo adventure for the player. It's mm -hmm. also a solo adventure for Lara. It's isolation. It's how Tomb Raider has always been. And I don't know if a relationship aspect, tying that into sexuality, would necessarily fit. This is the thing. Lara has always had the possibility of this. I mean, in The Angel of Darkness, we had the introduction of um, Curtis, Curtis yeah. Trent as a, a possible romantic interest. And there was, a, there was an undeniable chemistry between these two characters. But even then, Lara's outward behaviour never seemed to even hint at a sort of a romantic side of this or a sentimental side to it. I mean, I want to call just attention to the reboot again for a second, because whereas Lara's previous romantic hints in-game, I'm not talking about the comics or the films or anything, but in-game her only romantic interest has been Curtis, and even then it was only very sort of, um, it was much more, I think, as, as Murty Schofield has probably described it, more of a, a push-me-pull-me uh, pulling pigtails yeah. kind of conflict. Com uh, competitiveness. Kind of, yeah. But in the reboot, her relationship to Sam was given far more of an, of an implied romantic side of this. You know, to quote that, uh, that intermore.com article again, it says, between the lingering smiles and fierce loyalty that the two characters share for one another, the romantic tension between them both was palpable throughout and towards the end. Lara even rescued Samantha when she wore a bridal-like dress. <laughs> So it it has definitely become far uh, more of an overt topic in the in the reboot era, and maybe ties into a new form of feminism or a new wave of feminism that Tomb Raider has, has you know seen. <laughs> it rode in on the coattails of the third wave in the mid nineties, wow. and we're seeing a new generation come in and add their voice to the the franchise now. So. Fabi, just to ask you, what would you say is the single most important aspect of Lara that gives her such universal appeal? I guess it's, you know, 
it's her personality no matter which game we're talking about it's like the way she acts her attitude it's like that kind of thing it's so different from what we are used to see every day we look up to this or this is what drives us crazy in a positive way because many people have, oh you know yeah many people won't act like that and if they do they are considered heartless or you know cold-hearted um but with lara it seems this is so intense that it's it's something great and that it's like something to be uh, you know that it's something iconic and yes. that we should uh, we should stick to that jackie um i believe you are um part of the london gamers discord group yes I you're am. a very big gamer you know in preparation for this podcast i was just reading a few articles about this and it's interesting that Mark Bonington of Pink News in, in March of this year actually echoes exactly what Fabi has just said, which was that you always felt an affinity to an intelligent, urbane female figure, especially yeah. the one who kind of commanded kind of social authority that Lara did. Yes, exactly. Who doesn't suffer fools. That was a big, a big one. Yeah, I always find her intelligence above all was the most charming um, qualities of her. I mean, like, she always faces danger with a smile and... I love that aspect of her. Yeah, she she made me really interested in history as well when I was a child. Um, well, I started playing Tomb Raider 1 when I was about 11, which is kind of about when I discovered I was gay, I guess. And it created a very nice escape for me as well, just to see the world in her eyes, and I just loved it. <laughs> and so how would you feel about having Lara in the future? I mean, we're, we're talking about Shadow of the Tomb Raider coming out in September, and that was going to mark the end of this particular trilogy. How would you feel about Lara's sexuality or gender identity being explored more in the future? Or don't you think that's necessary? I would quite like to see it mentioned somewhere or portrayed in a way but not with this Lara perhaps but it could just be because I feel so little about her um I played all the old games so many dozens of times but only once for each of those new reboots and I don't really know why but I just could not relate to her even in like an um legend Lara I just loved how she has really clever quips with like the ruins like she was like um, look at her, she's beautiful to a corpse. And I thought that was just just really adorable. <laughs> yeah, far more interested in ancient shiny things than yes. actual other living human beings. Well, she cared about Anaya as well, she went to her rescue, and I, I kind of like that as well in Legend. Yes. That was kind of nice, I like that, uh, you know, that cutscene where they were talking about yeah. the past, and it felt like, okay, they were so close to each other, I mm -hmm. like that dynamic, it was... And Amanda was kind of like an ex-girlfriend that has gone a bit crazy <laughs> as well. <laughs> well, you know, we we don't know anything about that because, of course, that wasn't explored in any no. detail. But that lack of exploration allows you to to imprint your own, imagine things, imprint, yeah. yeah, to imagine your own sort of side of things. I mean, Chris, you know, how how would you feel if Lara was given more romantic interests in future games? Um, I think I would treat it as I treated that side of things being explored in the first two Tomb Raider movies. I think they kind of went for it because it felt like, you know, it's an adventure movie and it's that kind of stereotypical Hollywood trope of having a love interest for the hero. Yep. And maybe yeah. that love interest is going to stab Lara in the back. So there's that kind of aspect to it. But if that's the reason they're doing it and if it's not a real genuinely impactful thing for the narrative I don't think I'd be into it you know I think that's kind of how I would feel about the sexuality side of things being explored in a much more direct way I think if it just felt like they were doing it for the sake of to appease that kind of oh we need to we need to say conclusively if Lara is straight or gay or bisexual mm. or queer. I think if they were just doing that for the sake of it, I mm. don't think that would do that topic justice. I think they would have to have it related to the narrative. It would have to be important to the plot for me yes. to feel like it was necessary, to be honest. I see. Right, um, so in Uncharted, they actually did a very good job in putting romantic interest in the games that are actually meaningful and impactful Uncharted to the plot. Uncharted did fantastically for that. And I appreciate that. 
they've done that, and I would like to see Tomb Raider to have these sort of romantic storylines without it being an actual thing that just needs to be taking a box for. Yeah, no, don't worry, we're uh, we're no we're no stranger to Uncharted in these podcasts. <laughs> that could be quite interesting in a term in terms of again, it's there's the trope of uh, the damsel in distress and the hero having to rescue the girl. I can't count the amount of times in the Uncharted series where it's been the complete reverse where Chloe or Elena has come to Nate's rescue and seeing that maybe from an LGBTQ point of view I think that could be quite interesting to explore yeah that or like exploring the relationship between Zip and Alistair would be quite nice as well I suppose <laughs> oh, no, they can stay dead yeah. I hate them <laughs> <laughs> there were, those two were always a little bit of a puzzle you know what what they were doing actually living in Lara's house everyone was shipping them and particularly when you were sort of looking at the post-it notes on Zip's desk and wondering about webcams and bedrooms and okay you know that, that was a bit <laughs> That was a little bit, um, yeah. Okay. That was lovely. I remember Whose bedroom that one. exactly? Um, <laughs> no, but again, with the ambiguity and leaving things to the players' imaginations and you know fan fiction's imaginations as well. To go back to to Noel Adams again for a second, she sums up my feelings on the matter really quite beautifully. She says, "I personally don't ever want to see Lara's love life becoming a focal point of the series." By all means, drop hints and generate speculation to get the game of fantasizing uh, thinking, but don't spell it out. It's far, far more interesting to keep it ambiguous, you know, using our, our phrase there. Yes. Because I think that's one of Lara's core, no pun intended, <laughs> appeal <laughs> factors that, that she is ambiguous and she is enigmatic that way. And she will keep I would guessing. rather them show it to us as well instead of telling us. I think in terms of how I feel about Lara being an LGBTQ icon, I think it's kind of, it's like a twofold aspect from classic Lara in particular, because she's like strong and she's confident and she is herself. She's unashamedly herself. She's, or she stands tall and she's proud and she doesn't take crap from anyone. Um, I think LGBTQ youth, and maybe even particularly closeted ones, would see those kind of attributes like those are the sort of things that they want for themselves, uh, something maybe that they idolise and they want to emulate. Because in a world like in the 90s, that kind of world, that kind of society, it looked down on LGBTQ people. Um, there was this sort of societal expectation and it demeaned and it fought against and it oppressed LGBTQ people. And I think Lara Croft, she burst onto the scene and she was this beacon of strength. And she was... In her own right, she was a woman, and in gaming, she was such a big figure. She was a woman in a world that was seemed so sort of straight male and teenagery gamerish, and she stood tall and she fought. And I think that is a quality that a lot of LGBTQ people would mm. love to emulate, um, because very much so. Classic Lara is she is an avatar to a lot of respect. She is. She was stoic, she was quiet for a lot of the time, and I think that allowed people to, maybe LGBTQ people, to, to project themselves into her and to experience life her way, to fight against people who would try and stop her. Um, and I think that's the kind of twofold aspect of classic Lara. She's the, she's the fighter, but she's also quiet, so she allows you to relate to her that way in, in terms of putting yourself into her. But then, I mean, now things are getting better in the world maybe slightly maybe sometimes places like twitter make it seem like it's not but um i think lara herself has changed in this new world in this new re reboot she is different i did think for a while that lara's much more sort of prominent in-game character wouldn't let people project themselves onto her because she's much more talkative um, and i think that is true to a degree but it doesn't stop people being able to idolize her because while she starts as a sort of tame and character who's not nearly as strong or fierce as classic Lara. In game she's definitely still a character that overcomes any obstacle that's put in front of her and she's still a woman fighting in a man's world and there's still that kind of strength there under everything that I think LGBTQ people can still idolise and love. You know the thing that comes to my mind um, with 
you know, Lara being quiet about her sexuality. I think that's, as you said, that's something to our, you know, we should look at on a, for ourselves. Like, it's nothing to talk about in the game. It's like, because this is like a fiction character and it should all be in our imagination, you know, so. But this is the thing about Tomb Raider, that, that, that she, uh, that the game and Lara Croft has had such incredible universal appeal to to straight to male to female to gay bisexual queer every single uh aspect of the human sexuality spectrum has found something in her that they admire and not very many few people can say that fictional or real um this is what i've you know mentioned in my uh, uh term paper actually <laughs> <laughs> um and it's quite interesting to look at because Chris mentioned it's because of power and because of the, the attitude Lara is providing to her uh, fans and, you know, the ones that are playing Tomb Raider. It's like this can be found in the LGBTQ community as well, um, because we need something to look or to look up to. And this is what unites us, and especially during a, uh, during a period where many people didn't care for sexuality, uh, Lara Croft was very important actually um to make everyone feel included like wow she's amazing and we're going to be a community and we'll meet so many people over there it's like tomb raider is a meeting point especially nowadays where many people get together on twitter as chris mentioned um you know so many people are going to talk about things they have experienced or whatever because of Lara Croft for example because she's been so strong she's been like very ambitious and trying her best not to care for anyone else but for herself and this is what's really important for all of us and it's just brilliant to be in the you know to be open-minded about stuff and it can be you know transferred to, over to the community you know the lgbtq community it's like a very big meeting point where we can all come together that's well said that, that is very true it's as well because um, i was quite surprised because um the internet didn't wasn't really a thing when i was growing up and i realized that there were so many lgbtq um lara croft fans before i realized there was even like a gay community and I thought that was pretty amazing because like, I just never expected that. Like, My dad was also a big fan of Tomb Raider and he clearly liked the game in a different way than I did. That is actually true. You know, we've been focusing on Lara, you know, because of her strength. And Tomb Raider in general actually has helped me to overcome anxiety in some ways. Like, you know, we've got so many other characters, for example. We've got yes, Lapla. Yeah. <laughs> who is like one of my favorite characters um for me it was totally different it wasn't actually lara herself who's been an icon you know for the lgbtq community but it was more like natla maybe because her german uh, translation is super different you know in tomb raider underworld for example she was like ah lara you really are a woman after my own heart you know <laughs> <laughs> and in the German version, she took it to a more extreme level where it was like, well, you are one woman that I fancy. <laughs> oh, yes. So I was like, oh, she's she's so gay, actually. <laughs> she does walk in the way that I would think that is really a lot more feminized than Lara yeah, does. Tomb Raider is certainly full of very, very strong characters. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process, it makes us stronger as well. <laughs> true, true. And it's like this reaction like both Lara and Natla have a hu uh, are having a huge impact on me right now due to their personalities and their behavior so it's like there are so many things that come together to make this feeling of being proud of who I am you know a reality you know, I think it's a testament to the series that is true <laughs> I guess like when I was growing up I kind of picked up on her accent and that in that way I actually learned how to speak English properly and I really was grateful about that because I also tried to like reenact her animations because it was the first game that I played that had like a proper 3D animated character and in that sense she was pretty fascinating to me. I don't know if that's really related to anything but 
this. Well, it, it, it is related because, you know, this is a, a female character that was like one of the very first and very at the time, one of the only female characters in video gaming. So yeah, true. The fact that she's inspired so many people to try and emulate her. Um, you only have to look at, you know, the cosplay community in, in the modern day to, to see how many people <laughs> really want to fill Lara's shoes, literally. <laughs> That reminds me actually of myself a little bit, if I may say so. That hasn't been in my life since uh, 2013. Um, I've heard of her a lot and I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, before I was like a very innocent child. Well, what well, innocent isn't the right word, but you know, <laughs> I was like that little girl who was playing um, Super Mario and loved Princess Peach, for example. But you know, Lara is the complete opposite of Princess Peach. You know, and I was like so amazed by how she was put, uh, you know, by the way um, she was talking and acting up and, you know, shooting up enemies. I was like, well, that's nothing like Peach. That's amazing. And this yeah. is who I want to be. <laughs> so, yeah. I think we, we all wanted to be Lara. Well, thank you very much for your time, Jackie and Fabi. We really Thank you for inviting us, to be honest. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you coming on and discussing this important topic. Remember, if you've enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon so you always keep up to date with our newest episodes. Also, check out Survivor Reborn's social media feeds. All the links are in the description. Happy raiding. <laughs>